a collections conservator, my job is to make all the material in the collection last as long as it can. So that might mean that I'm learning about paper and how to store it and what to do to you know, improve the conditions, the pH, the um, relative humidity, the temperature to make it last as long as possible. It might be designing an enclosure. Um, it might be working with the HVAC engineer to try to get the system working um, better, better than it is, and I've done that. In the American Institute for Conservation, which is my professional organization, conservation is the umbrella term. In the American Library Association, preservation is the umbrella term. The one term we do avoid is restoration. Conservation tries to keep as much of the original as possible and not make it look like it was when it was new, but keep what we have and acknowledge that some of it is lost. Restoration is more the lipstick faction, mm -hmm. you know, like, let's make it look just like it did when it was new. Yeah. It's never going to, and you've lost some of the history, and it has a bad connotation. So one of the things we study in my classes is material history. Um, we spend a lot of time looking at early photographic processes because they're very heavily represented in collections. So we, go, we look at photographic materials in various collections on campus and in other situations. And we make photographs, we make salted paper prints, and we make cyanotypes and um, gum bichromate prints, and you know, because we have this great space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and before conservation, I was a photo major. I teach a lab class for basic paper conservation skills. Um, not sophisticated treatment, but the things that I want any archivist to be able to do, like paper mending and humidification and flattening. Mm -hmm. um, basic things that I can teach to anyone without having to teach you chemistry. My favorite course I think to teach is my materials class, and that's where we just look at stuff. And we look at stuff and what it's made of and how it deteriorates and how you can slow it down. What I did was scraped a very tiny piece of the pigment from right there, and I put it on a microscope slide, and that's on my polarizing microscope. It's a kind of microscope that shows you the morphology of fibers or pigments, and so we use it to identify things. You can see the cleavage of the pigments, and if I rotate the stage, you can see that those bright parts go to extinction and then come back again. By using that, I can identify it as orpiment, which is a danger because it's made with arsenic. Oh, let me show you one of my annoying object exercises. In every collection, you find things that are just oddly shaped or, you know, fragile. And they're often not the things that are very important or worth spending a lot of time on, but you have to keep them. Hmm. So what I do is I make up a series of horrible objects. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's a broken Christmas ball embedded in, pr in um, plaster. <laughs> so not only is it fragile, it can cut you very oh, easily. Yeah. And the exercise is to build something that's cheap, fast, and can be built by a technician with minimal equipment. Even if you're not going to be working with historic collections, I can teach you how to manage your own materials when they're in a flood, mm -hmm. or when you have a mold infestation, <laughs> or when you have um, you know, an infestation of bugs or anything mm -hmm. like that. My job is to find problems and fix them. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Thank you.